Hi, and welcome to the Google Cloud and Nokia series on the cloudification of telecom provider networks. Why now and how? I'm Max Kamenetsky, Group Product Manager of Cloud Networking at Google Cloud. I'm Jitin Bhandari, Chief Technology Officer for Cloud and Network Services at Nokia. The move to cloud networks presents a unique opportunity for telco operators to transform the network, the operations, and the ultimate experience that the 5G value and services will bring to their networks. That's right, Jitin. In fact, I recently chatted with Lester Thomas at Vodafone Group about how they're using automation to drive operational efficiencies into the network. Today, I'm very pleased to be speaking with Dr. Lester Thomas, uh, who is head of new uh, technology and innovation at Vodafone Group. Lester, it's wonderful to be able to speak to you today. Uh, I would love to hear more about your perspective as an operator. And specifically, maybe we can talk a little bit about analytics. Um, Vodafone obviously has a very storied history, and you're not new to analytics. Can you tell me a little bit about what you've done in the past, things that worked, and maybe perhaps some things that were challenges? Yeah, thanks. So, uh, to prior to us deciding in 2019 to adopt the Google Cloud platform for analytics, we had invested very heavily in our own big data platforms. And what we found, we were sinking too much of our time and money in addressing the underlying tooling, and we weren't, we weren't able to actually develop you know, enough of our own use cases, develop the time and energy to develop use cases on top, which is where the real value is for us. And because our tooling wasn't really scalable enough, too many markets were still using sort of legacy analytics and business intelligence platforms to drive their business insight. So despite all of our investment, we didn't have enough capability or capacity in our tooling to meet the ambitions of the different teams of actually driving analytics. Yeah, that's very interesting. So it, it sounds like you were facing a problem where you had a lot of challenging uh, data sources from in a lot of different geographies, and somehow you needed to simplify that, to unify that. How did you go about solving that? If you're going to start an analytics journey, like getting the, like the data governance right is a, is a critical part. We have all these different use cases that we use um, use the data for, to drive sort of business insight and, and value. The underlying data for it is actually in a common data lake. It's all in common data models. So as we do each use case, we will bring in new data into our, our data ocean, but they'll be uh, standardized and, and normalized. There's a lot of work on things like uh, the data quality. So if you just bring data in, you have to actually have the right ownership and people who actually care about the quality of that data. You need to have the right Lifecycle management. So, you know, we have you know very sort of strong standards around how do you have consistent manager management of high risk or high value data, and how do you manage the full lifecycle from creation to eventually you know uh, delete, deleting that data. It's a whole lot of work around like the interoperability and exchange. We are bringing data in from all our European markets into this Google Cloud platform. So there's a whole lot of work on data interoperability and exchange. And finally, there's like more business standards around like on data sharing. So what data can be shared and for what purposes? So we're very ca careful with sort of the privacy that we apply to the data. And so several piece of data has an owner and it also has a definition of what you can use it for and what levels of sort of customer permission you use it for, for different purposes. Yeah. That, that's very interesting to hear. So it sounds like very much you're describing a data platform because you talked about methods for data intake, for data regularization, for data ownership, for consolidation, for defining uh, how you can use this data. So this, to me, this sounds quite a bit like a story of platforms and applications, maybe similar to what uh, Google's Android story was. Um, certainly you're building this because you're thinking of certain use cases. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the, how you're thinking of using this data? You know, our networks, uh, our network operations today, they receive like, you know, thousands of events and alarms off the network. There's lots of use cases around how you intelligently process and analyze the, that data. Um, there's use cases around network planning. So, uh, you know, when we're investing in new networks, how do you plan and to spend your money to make the biggest impact to your customers of those network investments? 
you take it think about your more your customer system so um customers now they tend to interact with us through through sort of text messaging um, and chatbots and so we do a lot of work around you know can we automate that so like the first contact in both is typically a, a chatbot we call toby it's a, like a fully automated and if you're asking a, a standard query you'll get an automated response if you ask a more complex query at least you'll be passed on to the person who is in the sort of the area for your query and the other thing we do is like a lot of that that data you then analyze because actually our target is for the customer not to have called us in the first place like can you get root cause analysis of the underlying problem that caused that customer to call like our target is how many contacts we have per customer per month and and then when you think about sort of the like the 5g and iot use cases often those use cases themselves are data analytics use cases so typically our enterprise customers who are you know who are, who are buying these iot services they don't actually want like connectivity or managing devices they want the data in fact if we can get that data for them and process it and give them like a digital twin or even do data and analytics and the service they they consume from us is actually an analytics service so i think there's lots of use cases in the actual end user scenario of the actual value we add you know for particularly for these 5g and iot solutions lester do you believe it's possible in some of these uh, scenarios you're just talking about to utilize ai ml uh, to do more intelligent uh, detection so as an example uh, do you think it's possible uh, at some point to be able to uh, first uh, understand when there is a problem uh, somewhere in the network uh, based on uh, the data that you're receiving and perhaps some training data that you've had in the past do you believe it's possible uh, to have a model uh, that will be able to then tell you uh, what it thinks uh, the root cause uh, for the problem is, and perhaps even to then remediate uh, that problem. Yeah, absolutely. Like the the anomaly detection use case that we've done so far is only really about how do you process these this data and analyze the root cause of what's going on in the network. But we absolutely see that as almost like the very first part of what we call an autonomous network. And we actually use in our in our plans, we have uh, plans which we're following this you know, autonomous car model of having five levels of autonomy. And we think that we can go from having sort of, uh, sort of manual operation maintenance, assisted operation, like a par partial autonomous network, maybe in the individual domains of our network, there's a level of closed loop feedback to automatically fix certain common problems. And then you look at, there might be higher level, you might even be adjusting the topology or network based on this knowledge. So we think there are, there are far more use cases we can build on top. And what we're doing now is only really the start. Mm, this is fascinating. It's, it sounds like you're embarking on, on a really, uh, really interesting journey. Um, so what are some of the lessons that uh, you've learned uh, so far in this process? Um, I think the, the one I covered around data covenants, I think like, that's absolutely critical. And, and we've learned that from our experience before moving to Google Cloud. I think I think about the Google Cloud platform itself. So what we found um, is like it is far more scalable. Like you do get this sort of global scale capability. We've had to be much more controlling because th there's a risk that we actually spend all of our OPEX investment because almost like there's no limit on what you can what you can process so more work we go on about how do we optimize the the almost like driving the, these use cases to actually manage the the investment we have on it um the other thing i'll say is like it, it alludes to your your comment around around android it is a platform and one of the things we really like about the google platform is we're investing all this money on these applications and use cases, and it's all based on open standards. So we feel, you know, things like, um, you know, Kubernetes as a standard. We feel like we're investing in something, and there's a huge community and support around it, and we're not going down like a very proprietary route. So almost like, yeah, it was a very strategic investment for us. So that's really critical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lester, it was fascinating talking to you about this. I, I love learning about the fact how now that you've established this platform, you are free from having to do all this manual labor to regularize the data, to, uh, to curate the data, that now you really have the opportunity to focus on the use cases, on the business outcomes of this, which is really what you want uh, to get out of this. Thank you again for taking the time to speak with me today. Thank you. That was a very interesting conversation. What's your takeaway, Max? 
You know, Jaden, it was great for me to hear how Dr. Thomas and Vodafone first focused on establishing the platform, standardizing the intake, regularizing the data, ensuring that they're owners for all of the key pieces, such that with this platform, they could then focus on the insights that they could glean from it. Thanks for catching our discussion on cloudification of networks. We'll see you next time in the cloud.